Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will show you that the standard solar model is falsified by our best telescopes. Now I have made a couple of videos about the Sun and the liquid metallic hydrogen model by Pierre Marie Robitaille as an alternative to the standard solar model, but this is maybe the shortest proof that the standard model does not work. And it's coming from these wonderful pictures of the Daniel Inoue telescope. I mean, you have to enjoy this. It's very detailed. This is the Earth in comparison. And you see all these very tiny structures. And uh, it has, a res has got a resolution of 0.03 arc seconds. That's fantastic. And, well, it's, of course, this telescope is just the latest in an evolution of solar telescopes. We had the... Uh, this one with a resolution of 0.5 arc, arc seconds, then 0.2, 0.1 arc, arc seconds, the Swedish Solar Telescope, and 0.07 arc seconds. And now we arrived at this um, yeah, very spectacular uh, precision and angular resolution. And, well, what's the problem with the standard model? The standard model says that the surface, the apparent surface of the Sun is just illusory, while all the visual evidence says, okay, it has a normal usual surface. Now, how does the standard model explain this so-called illusory surface? The problem is, if you have a gaseous model, you need to postulate huge opacity. That means regions where the sunlight cannot pass, which are intransparent. And this region, as an absolute minimum, has to extend over say 500 kilometers in the standard model. So, uh, can this region be 500 kilometers? Let's see. If you look at these pictures of the Daniel Inoue telescope, you see that's wonderfully crisp. Maybe you have to go to the internet and look up the pictures in real detail because the video might be a little bit blurred, but you see this very crisp, very clear structures with this spatial and angular resolution. And if you do the numbers now, uh, you can such a resolution of 0.03 arc seconds corresponds to roughly 20 something kilometers. Okay, so one pixel and the other pixel have a distance of 20 kilometers. Compare this with the model of the solar atmosphere I showed you before. Do you see the problem? Now, all this would mean that the light coming from one pixel is formed in a region over a depth of about 500 kilometers, but with a width of about 20 kilometers. Now imagine here is one region that forms, say, a bright pixel, and then the adjacent region, which forms a black pixel, or say, a darker pixel. Again, you would have a region material over 500 kilometers in height and only 20 kilometers in width, the material collaborates to form that visual impression. And I mean, that's just contradictory because you know that you have these huge turbulences in the solar atmosphere. And if these turbulences are, if these turbulences extend over say 500 kilometers, that would mean that the final image is also blurred on a scale, on a horizontal scale of 500 kilometers. If instead you believe, okay, these little disturbances, these uh, turbulences under the surface of the sun do just extend laterally, say, 20 kilometers, so they are all in here, they would have to conspire over a depth of 500 kilometers. So either possibility does not make sense, and that is just a contradiction that falsifies the standard model. The pictures are way too accurate and too good to still believe in this model of a vertically extended photosphere of 500 kilometers. So, I mean, we have to bid goodbye to this conventional picture and arrive at, as I said, an alternative in which there is a real surface presumably formed by a chromosphere of dense molecular hydrogen and a metallic or semi-metallic state that represents the photosphere. Well, I have made other videos. There are other contradictions. This was just one 
of the most obvious and maybe the shortest one and you can look up also this videos I have written a book about the Sun and if you want to go into more detail look up the detailed papers by Pierre-Marie Robitaille here's also a YouTube channel where you can find very good sound explanations about the true nature of the Sun if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and if you are interested in fundamental questions of physics subscribe to this channel